Hello, this is again Akujumbi, and that's the second part of my painting technique tutorial in which I want to show you how I'm actually painting. As mentioned, normally I need around 12 to 15 hours for a painting, and the most time consuming part is to create the facial structure and proportions. Uh, since I'm not using references of real people, but I just try out what can work. And the second thing that costs time is finding the right colors, mixing them together, blending and modeling the faces. Just want to say this is the way I model the faces and how I use colors. In the end you need to find out what aesthetic might look best for you. So I had no education in art or painting, but I'm highly influenced by classic oil pen paintings. And when examining those paintings closer, you can see there is a structure visible, which gives the faces more life. It makes them look just more natural than just one bland, smoothened out tone. It looks like the skin is uneven. There are little reddish or bluish marks on it. Of course, that structure is created due to the right brushes, which is not easy to replicate if you paint digitally and don't have brushes which simulate an oil brush. I do have oil brushes in Photoshop, but I'm not very good in using them, so I guess one needs more skills. Um, we can just zoom into the picture, and here you can see the skin is uneven. So this is due to the technique I'm using with my brush. So we have a lot of different colors here, uh, bluish, reddish, a little bit of yellow. First of all, I guess we take a look at the brush. I found the brush in Photoshop which suits me best. And I can achieve with that brush the same structure as an oil brush. So let's first take a look at the brush settings. I am using that brush. And here we can see the transfer is on, the smoothing is on, spacing is at 5% and the hardness is at 100%. And here you can see it's 100% opacity, the flow is at 100%. Maybe we can take a look at the difference of that particular brush in comparison with the airbrush. Let's take for example red. You can see it looks like that. When you make strokes you always have this. You need to overpaint and overpaint until you get the solid color. So now we have the solid color. Um, I, I have the pen pressure on, of course. So when I just push a little bit with my pen, I get that kind of like a powdered tone. It's still that tone you can see here, but I'm just applying very little pressure. Now, more pressure, this, the tone gets deeper. One more time. Now we have the tone. Maybe one more time. Now, so three times almost. So, little pressure, harder pressure. This is, I don't want to break my pencil like that. And this is really, really just very tiny strokes you can see here. Now we can take the airbrush. It looks like that. Typical airbrush. You don't get those um, edgy structure. This is a very solid color brush, so like that. It's high opacity. When we take now a look at the skin, you can see there is like red, there is blue. Actually, it's not blue. 
when we take the color picker, we go here and you can see it's rather some orange grayish thingy here. It's not a lot of space between those colors. Here we have almost a gray color. You can see it here. This is the color. The lips, they are a little bit more red. The nose, it's again rather a, a um, gray, orangish tone. Like this, there isn't a lot of change. Now here you think it's blue? Is it blue? No, it's not blue. It's actually gray. Here, what is this? It looks blue. It's not blue, it's gray. It's still on the red um, spectrum. Now when we go here to the forehead, you have this. It's again the that color. Oh, we have here something like that. It looks kind of bluish, greenish. What is it? Oh, it's on the yellow spectrum. This is a surprise, isn't it? You can see this is really not blue. What's blue is the eyes. This is really blue. And this, the hair is also blue, but the skin is rather everywhere on the grayish side. Now I'm actually not painting with gray. I can show you the step pictures of this one. This is the very first step of this picture, just a rough sketch. So let's take the color picker. So let's take the color picker and we have this. So I started with a tone like that and we go on. So I'm using a little bit more reddish tones too, like that. And then I can take the color picker. So it's already a little bit something in between those. Here on the cheek, you can see this is like some very dull color. Normally, when I'm doing that, I'm just using some bluish or turquoise grayish tone, very bright one. And I'm carefully applying it. So you can see it already is changing. It looks bluish, but when you go with the color picker, it's not blue because the colors blend in together. Okay, this is maybe a very crucial point. You can see the skin tone really changed. How did this happen? Um, at some point when I am satisfied with the face, I am uh, applying another layer. Here in Photoshop, you can go here and go to brightness and contrast. What does this brightness and contrast layer actually do? I make it a little bit darker. You can see the tone is changing. It looks more thick. And here it gets more gray. So I'm basically using this brightness and contrast layer to make the colors thicker, juicier, I would say. When I have this, I can go on and model the face with more colors. Because when the colors are too bright in the beginning, you can apply a lot of highlights because the skin already looks very bright. So it's better to make it then a little bit darker. And then you can like here, apply highlights where you want them to have. Here there was a little bit of liquify used. Like this. And you can see it's really a slow process because you have to blend a lot. I could blend on this. The color choosing and so on. It also helps you with structuring the face. Here you can see, yeah, I'm just overpainting. So I'm taking a little bit of a blue color to make it 
make it a highlight and it looks like that when painting here the nose is really red I can make it a little bit less red but little window so we can see him in small and we can take a look what is actually happening because from near it's not always so easy so we want him for example to have more reddish cheeks let's do it like that oh he's blushing so we should make it again a little bit more dull we can do it with that when you take the range here it makes the colors again a little bit um, less saturated like that when you want more bluish tones okay this is not a good <laughs> painting right now but that you can get a feeling how it's working and like that this is too dark it's too much and blend it with the color picker I'm just blending the colors together here you can smooth it out we can take a look what happens next here you can see I already applied a little bit of the gray uh, of the greenish or turquoise tone so I'm basically adding more bluish and more reddish tones to model the face step by step it's a lot of guessing involved so here you can see already um, smoothened out a little bit of the cheeks and here the lips let's go on like that so it's really modeling the face here i used liquify for the eyes maybe we go back to the final stage so i can show you how it works when i uh want to change the facial structure a little bit. Once I apply the, um, the colors, I'm mostly just using the color picker. Just when I want really to change the tone completely, I'm choosing for a more bluish tone. Like that. Okay, let's, for example, here I want a more of a highlight. So I'm highlighting the cheek here with a blue so you can see this isn't blue anymore because it it's now uh, mixed together with the fleshy tone so it's kind of something like that I want him less blushy let's see what is this um, maybe like that so I'm smoothening out the cheek let's make it like that and he already looks a little bit different um, as for the nose for example he is like that i want the nose a little bit smaller like that yeah is the point i don't want it to shine so much i want it less red so i'm taking the color picker and make it like that so mixing a lot of colors together will help you to get that structure and that particular brush is helping you can make it like that but you should stay in one range um, you shouldn't choose when the colors are dull like that here in that range a tone which is on that spectrum because it would look very unnatural like i mean it's possible nothing wrong with that but when you want to stay rather natural i wouldn't recommend it back or I want his uh, lips more red so I go with a more reddish tone okay my little boy <laughs> so okay let's go back and this is how the skin tone is working you can make it that now here I have a little bit of a blue it's going down so I can make it like that carefully this is how it works so I'm mixing a lot of fleshy tones together to get that structure you can also apply a little bit more of brown this is okay it depends on what you want to achieve if you want to make it look really smooth you must blend a lot 
but then the structure will go away. You can of course use the airbrush too. You can see I really blended everything, but the structure is missing now. You can see it here in the final picture. The structure is going away. And it gets more, I wouldn't say boring, but looks more perfect, like from some magazine. But I think that the more structured version just looks more interesting. Um, maybe something as for the lips. Uh, you can use a more saturated color for the lips so something like that and when you want to create then the lower part you go and take a more grayish tone a less saturated and that will help you with making them look more I don't know glossy yeah something like that and I really do little little strokes it's almost like I'm just tapping on the canvas. This is the color mixing. I am really recommending to take looks at classic oil painting and uh, close-ups of classic oil paintings. Now you can see I'm really painting quite analog. There's not a lot of blending options or other things. I'm just picking the colors, applying them and this is really, really very simple painting. I guess that might be enough for info as for how I'm working. And I just want you to know that even if you try out my technique and it won't work immediately, don't give up, don't get frustrated. Although I know frustration, yeah, I know it. Either it is something that doesn't work for you or you just need to get used to the brush, the blending and the choosing of colors and so on. It's really nothing that you can learn in just one day. At least it took me um, a couple of years to understand how the colors are working together. And even nowadays I often struggle and it appears to me that it's sometimes rather luck than actual skills that are included. So yeah, thank you for watching and I hope I was able to help you a little bit. You're always bowing, Akujumbi.